Lesson 15.3a, Writing Equations Using the Volume of a Rectangular Prism. We're going to use the formula to help us find missing measures. We can use the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism to write an equation when given a volume. Then we can solve that equation to help us find the missing measurements of a prism. If they tell us that the volume is 144 cubic feet, and they tell us the length is 12 and the width is 4, well, the height is missing, we can use this information to find the height. We can either use volume is equal to length times width times height, or we can use the formula volume is equal to base height. And this capital B represents the length times the width as the base area. So here we have an aluminum toolbox. The toolbox has a volume of 864 cubic inches. The width of the toolbox is 8 inches, and the length is 18 inches. What is the height of the toolbox? We write the formula. V is equal to length times width times height. We put in the given information. The volume is 864. The length is 18. The width is 8. We substitute in all the values. Now we multiply 18 times 8. We get 144. We know 144 times the height will equal 864. Now we divide both sides of the equation by 144 to isolate this variable h to one side. We learned how to use division as an inverse operation back in video 11.3c. That's linked in the description. 864 divided by 144 is 6. We could do the long division, or we could do 144 times some numbers to see where the 864 would come in. We try 5, that's not enough. We try 6, and that's perfect. So we know that's a 6. And same numerator and denominator, so this makes a 1. We have one H. We know the toolbox is six inches high. This fish tank has a volume of 4,500 cubic inches and a base area of 300 square inches. What is the height of this fish tank? So they already told us the length and the width multiplied together. That area is 300. We use the formula. Volume is equal to base times height. We know the volume is 4,500. We know the base is 300. We need to find the height. We substitute in those given values into the equation. Now, to isolate this h to one side of the equation, we divide both sides of the equation by this coefficient, 300. 300 divided by 300, same numerator and denominator. We have 1. We have 1h. One and 4,500 divided by 300, well, that's pretty much like saying 45 divided by 3. That's 15. We know 15 is equal to h. The fish tank is 15 inches deep. This rectangular prism has a volume of 1 half cubic yard. What is its width? We see that the length is 3 fourths yard and the height is 1 and 1 third yard. We know the volume is 1 half. We substitute those numbers into the formula, length times width times height, and we have 1 half is equal to 3 fourths times some unknown width times 1 and 1 third. We convert this mixed number to an improper fraction of 4 thirds. Remember, we do 1 times 3 and add the numerator. That's 4, and then we use that denominator. So we have 4 thirds. We multiply 3 fourths times 4 thirds, and we get a 12 over a 12. Same numerator and denominator, that's a 1. We have 1 W. That means this half comes down, 1 half is equal to the width. We know the width of the prism is 1 half yard. So as I said before, in video 11.3c, we learned to use division as an inverse operation to isolate a variable to one side of the equal sign. If we have 12 is equal to 3x, this 3 is the coefficient, we can divide both sides of the equation by this 3 coefficient, and 
12 divided by 3 is 4. This is the same numerator and denominator, so we have 1x. 4 is equal to x. And going way back to video 4.2c, we learned that we can divide fractions by multiplying them by the reciprocal. So reciprocal is the upside down, flipped around version of the fraction. So the reciprocal of 1 half would be a 2 over a 1. If we have 1 eighth divided by 1 half, we can multiply 1 eighth times a 2 over a 1. 1 times 2 is 2, 8 times 1 is 8. We simplify it, it's 1 fourth. We divide it by multiplying by the reciprocal. If we have a fraction coefficient, we can isolate the variable to one side of the equal sign by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of the fraction. If we have 1 eighth is equal to 1 half x, we can multiply both sides of this equation by the reciprocal 2 over 1. That gives us a 2 over a 2, that's a 1x, that's just an x, and on this side we get a 2 over an 8, that's a 2 eighths, which simplifies to 1 fourth. So we want to divide to isolate this variable x, but then we would be dividing 1 half by 1 half and 1 eighth by 1 half, we can just multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal to do division of fractions. So that brings us to our last example. We need to find the height of this rectangular prism. It has a volume of 1 fourth cubic foot. We can see the length is 1 and a half foot. The width is 1 half foot. We substitute the values into the formula and we write the mixed numbers as improper fractions. We multiply, 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times 2 is 4, we have 3 fourths. Now, we have 3 fourths h, but we need to isolate this variable h, and to divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient, so we have 3 fourths times 4 thirds. We do the same thing to the other side of the equation. We multiply by the reciprocal. 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times 3 is 12, we have 12 twelfths. That's 1h. On this side, we have 4 times 1 is 4, and 3 times 4 is 12, we have 4 twelfths, and that simplifies to 1 third. So we know the height is 1 third yard. So in order to isolate this variable to one side, when we need to divide both sides by 3 fourths, this coefficient, to divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal, so we multiply both sides by 4 thirds, and then we simplify. We're now finished with the first part of this lesson. We're going to move on to the second part, solving multi-step volume problems. Remember that these videos, 11.3 and 4.2c, are linked in the description if any of these were confusing to you. You can just watch them real quick and then move forward. You'll be okay. Have a great day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.